Hi there and welcome to my channel. This is Kate in the Nest and it's Roxy's Journal of Stitchery time. Yes, we're into our second prompt of summer and I hope like me you are excited. Whether you've finished the other prompts or not, it's always just lovely to see Rachel and Sarah's work um, and how generously they share where they're up to. So, I love a good butterfly and you know me how much I love flowers. So just before I turn the camera on, I popped out into my garden and bravely braved the bees that are all over this um, blossom. So I've shared this before that I watch this come out in springtime. It's survived the um, the winter, they're not winter winds, they're just the winds that we've had lately. And as I look out, I can see the bees. I haven't brought any bees in with me, but just if you haven't had a, a fresh flower today, this is my gift to you. Beautiful colours and unashamedly um, inspiring to me and my work. So the prompt is butterflies or bugs and gee, how lucky are we to do that? Rachel shared the book um, that I've previously shared, um, which I haven't brought down um, with me, but we have such access to so many beautiful things um, with this prompt. So I have, um, I did purchase one set of Rachel's fabrics and this is the piece that made my little 3D butterfly before. And I thought this was the perfect uh, piece to be looking at and seeing how I can work that into my style. Okay, so we're gonna go on an adventure with Rachel's Fabrics. This is my accordion journal. It's sitting in this nest. A couple of you were asking about, again, the sizes of my vessels and see this one, um, because I used a, a firm fabric stands up and probably the highest. Um, so yeah, we've been talking about that lately. Underneath, I've got a whole lot of bits and pieces that may or may not come out today in terms of um, bugs and butterflies. There's a big bird. I thought I did have my butterfly that I brought back from Kansas with me, but that's enough context probably. Let's let's get going and see where we end up. So I'm hoping you are well and enjoying your making. It's been a, such an interesting week in, for me in terms of my making and I'm wondering if that's the same for you. Let's just put, oh, I nearly squashed it. Let's put this up there. So we're completely inspired by um, nature as we work on field notes. Um, yeah, so I've been crocheting, I've been stitching, I've been out to the green door. Um, I worked this morning, got up in my PJs and talked to the beautiful people in the United States. Um, yeah, so it, it's just been a, one of those very we varied weeks. I have um, been spring cleaning as well and have managed to um, misplace my um, best glasses that I can see very well with. So I'm on a, <laughs> I'm on a secondary pair here, but I still think we'll be okay. All right. So one new person asked how I started this and many of you are doing books um, or accordion journals or journals or all sorts of things. So, but just as a quick refresher, this is my summer accordion journal, which is laid out for all the three prompts. So one, two, three, four, five, six pages. It's on my favorite piece of blanket um, because I just love stitching into that. And if you look at this, you probably can't identify many of the prompts yet because the first one for summer was wildflowers. So literally I have applique here, I've collaged um, these beautiful bright blooms and I have here my version of 
uh, what would we call that? It's not a sunflower, but just a, a happy summer bloom with variegated uh, wool in the middle and this piece that I got out of Zoe's pack last week. So onto that and knowing that I have the freedom of putting butterflies and bugs anywhere, let's just go through a process. So the value of this piece of fabric, and it's the cotton, not the linen, one, two, three, four, five butterflies to choose from. And this butterfly is attached to this flower. And to me, that absolutely goes. So I just want to, because I like the ripped edges, the raw. Um, and I've seen Rachel working with the script. And so I'm thinking that that might be a handy piece to have with the script behind it and moving into a little bit of this pink. Who knows where that will go. And this one, I absolutely love that it's joined to those pink flowers. So let's get so here's my rolling scroll <laughs> and I would love you to be here because your eye will be telling where it should go. But I have got my bright oranges here. I've got a less vibrant part here and I've got my fluoro there with my cross stitch, which is part of the binding story uniting, if we like. So. We could have a flower here, a flower here, but I do love that birdie. So that birdie might have an individual butterfly that could come down. And I suppose I shouldn't do too many butterflies because I could have a, I could have some bugs and things as well. But let's just, you know, I hope you can see this. These fabrics are so beautiful. Under here, it's got lovely, my favourite daisies um, with yellow centres. And that's a lovely little bit as well. But I'm just going to, for the moment... I could have ironed this before, but I didn't even think of that. So would that be a nice contrast with the bird and the flower? I'm not sure if some of you uh, new people know that last year my word of the year was transformation and I used the butterfly to um, to symbolize that for me. So I am thrilled that one year on after facing some tough times that here I am being able to share with so many of you um, as my new friends and in this wonderful community of ours that we can celebrate all the wonderful parts of nature. And I think by this project, we are really honoring and it's a real cause for gratitude, isn't it? That, um, I don't know if you're like me, but I noticed how many bees there were on those flowers just then when I went out <laughs> because it's in my um, in my consciousness. And again, as context, if you're um, new, I 
started out with um, the plain linen and um, a traditional field note style and um, I ended up learning lots of things and that's why I love doing this um, project. It's This is the thing that's really evolved my style and helping me know who I am as a, as a stitcher. Um, that, yeah, I, I need the colour and I can then add, add a label or those other elements. So um, that's just this context if you're thinking, okay, it's not doing field notes. I proudly am doing field notes. Okay, so look at that beautiful piece. Can you see that? So I'm thinking, I love those petals, but if we go as my style is flower to flower, could we have that like that? So we have the swirl of the pink with some embroidery on there. And I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't believe, oh yes, she has. I was about to say you wouldn't believe that I haven't got at least one pin cushion. I have a number of pin cushions, but I've used all my pins. And I'm not I'm gonna save that. And what else was I thinking? Oh this one here. So and I do love that. Maybe I do like this script, you see. I think it's going to be too big at the moment. Yeah, I think I'll leave that one. And that means that we've made a decision. You know, I have a funny thing about butterflies. So I, I, I feel that they should fly that way. So when I've got this one here, I'm thinking, no, around the other way. So it's like an upwards journey so let me be into this flower join yep and then that bit of yellow picks up here and then extends onto these bits okay let's play mm. I'll just put a needle there that butterfly I hope it doesn't hurt and let's get going I would like to start off because I again I've been quite envious of um, the quilt that Rachel's making for Ju uh, not for Juju inspired by Juju's quilt being made for um, Lulu and the work, the canther work. And I remember when I first started sharing, um, sharing my stitching, I always told you I like to start um, with just some literally slow stitching. And these are going in a different direction over this join. Well, you can tell I'm happy because I'm stopped talking very early in the video. <laughs> it could be my early morning, but no, I am so happy to be doing this because look at these colours. I've missed, I've missed me, if you like. Only in terms of these brights. 
loving the pastels in my very very vintage i need to say thank you so many people are watching that series and commenting and i've been really encouraged really really touched actually um just by yeah loyal support and just encouragement to keep going so that's my thank you for the day that's a very big uh, stitch there so we're going to go back cave style and make it into a big cross stitch so let's go down you mightn't be able to see it but I can and there's even a limit to me and my bigness of stitches so that's just more of a cross now okay let us shimmy over this way feeling I'd love to go up and do some work on there but we will see so many of you would invisibly stitch this and then come back which maybe I should do such a beautiful piece of fabric let's get it down and then I can work over the top Keep tidying everything up and telling you I know where everything is, but I'm losing more things. I kept crochet cotton down here. So that I always had it. Always, always. Oh, I can use this. Okay, so this is just a um normal stitching thread if I can get it open I haven't used it that's where my glasses I can't see there's something going to happen there there we go very very fine Thread this one for the moment. Oops. Not sure if I ended up telling you that I found my missing crochet hook. <laughs> Maybe I did. <laughs> it was in a nest. Yeah, I think I did share that. Okay, let's put this down. So I think I learned this on the very, very first stitching video that I watched Rachel and Sarah make, which was just in volume five. And they talked about just using tiny stitches and on the front and big stitches on the back just to secure multiple pieces so we're going to do that here all around I actually haven't watched Sarah's video yet I've saved that for when I come home tonight and I'll probably spoil myself and just sit and stitch this piece some more as I watch. And it doesn't matter how far these are apart because this will be lined or covered with something on the back, who knows. It's just making sure that it doesn't move. can, well it's not exciting stitching, you can just admire um, 
this fabric and think about what are you going to, what was your first reaction when you heard the new prompt? I'm very new to <laughs> anything but flowers, so. It's fun. It's so quiet again. Think about this butterfly. I haven't seen many around yet. We we're in that real change of season time, I think, where it starts cool in the mornings and then warms up. So as I said, I've just started the closet clean out. I dropped some coats to a local Op shop at lunchtime and felt good about that. I love that I've used them and loved them, but I don't need as many. And I know it's the end of the season, but um, you know, I did think, oh, I'm hoping that someone finds these and, and thinks, oh my gosh, what a bargain! Exactly the way I, I do now with doilies <laughs> and embroideries. to see my mum tomorrow in Sydney and I would actually like to take her to the sewing basket because she loves that. I haven't told her about that yet. We'll just see how what she's feeling like, whether she wants coffee over there or to our usual little cup and saucer one. Okay, how pretty is that? Love it. So I've got this white space in here, but I'll count for that. And, you know, I'm looking at this space here and I keep thinking about, let's see what else we've got in here. Aha, uh -huh, that's what, that's what was talking to me in my head as I was st stitching. Let's use some of these beautiful daisies and I can't get them all exactly but I'll just do a bit of rough fussy cutting I don't even think I could call mine fussy it's just cutting and and hope for the best. Okay, so how are we going to resolve this? Because I don't want to lose too much. Maybe it's filling in that gap there. Yes, because there's a little bit of red there. And that could be flower to flower. Yep. And let's go a little bit over there, chop that last daisy off, but that will not be wasted. And then, oh yes, yeah, so we can tuck, just depending on where I want to go. I've got a few, I was just suddenly thinking I could tuck. I could. I could tuck that butterfly over the top of the flowers and then the be the bird leads into there. We will see, but I don't need this stripe. OK, 
for me is that blue. I can go in here and use a bit more. Or I can go over here. I love that little bit of pink there, you see. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to trim. You probably won't be able to see this definition, but I just want to tuck this under here. Or here. Or up here. So that that stitching um, is still there. Okay, so we're, yeah, I quite like that. We're not losing all our stitching down there. Still feel the texture of it could come up a tiny bit. Don't want to lose, oh, I did. I mean, be ironic. I can't remember where I cut this from, but what if that was joined onto there in the start? work. All right, I want, mm, oops, not too strong. I actually want the, oh, there it is. I want this variegated one. Oh, would I want really fluoro, everybody? I think maybe really fluoro. Course, this one's got flecks of um, the butterfly, and we need a bit of contrast in here. Okay, so remove this. And where did I go with the last needle? Doesn't matter, let's swap that over for a pin. <laughs> Oops. I, th I just realized that it might be another anniversary and something to celebrate for me. I'm into finding, you know, I always think of what, what was I doing on this day a week ago or a month ago? And I'm just thinking that this is the anniversary of me doing my first YouTube, which I think was early, couldn't have been early March. No, anyway, forget that everybody, but it hasn't been that long and I'm so, so happy that I've done it. All right, what are we going to do, Kane? Got this light pink. Actually, I'm going to try something I've never done before. There are little pinkness bits in between these flowers. And I'm feeling that if we stitch on the lines that are dark, It'll make the white pop out. I don't know what's happening. Pull that down. So basically, this is a little stitch wherever I see a pinky line. Don't ask me what that is called. But it feels nice to be free to do it. Just 
and then I might be able to get some really bright yellow to fill in the flowers of the from blank what's the middle of the flower called on another long thread behind here which I don't know what it's doing there so I will just oh what have I done oh, that's another oh that's the invisible stitching one hello Amelia my friend who tells me that she loses something on her desk every day and I think we are peas in the pod or so so similar because we just swap stories of what's gone missing in the most obvious spot and does that happen to anyone else out there do you Sometimes Rachel does say that, so I feel better. <laughs> okay, now this not might be making no sense at all to your eyes. And oh goodness me, okay, what is honestly Um, but I can see by doing this, it's going to make the petals more puffy. And so I'm thinking of, it's the negative, isn't it? That, um, the outside of the flower has got the color and the petal itself will stay white. So even if it doesn't work out, I'm just doing this flower over here for a start. And we'll think what happens after that. Go around there. Let's go this way. It is always that challenge when you, as others have shared, if you have too long a thread with your wool you can sort of hear that it tugs it and it does gradually damage the fibers but I am having fun and I have a little bit more thread in my needle so let's go let's go let's save our wool go here That's a more obvious one up here. Mm -hmm. And there's one more tiny one here. These are the light is fading here and my eyes might not be seeing every one of them, but and now I can see another one down here. So I probably won't do all those flowers, <laughs> but I learned something then. And I'll do a different thing with the others. But it's just built up some texture and let's let's join these 
with flower to flower. So where do I need to go? Let's come along there and then down to here. Let's do, let's do a big spiky flower. Hopefully the variegation will, um, yep, starting to work. spokes so far. Five. Six. And let's go seven up here. And again, nothing particularly obvious, but I just love that that little flower in the corner there has joined this garden to this yellow stripe. So let's go and we'll do another one. It's very like the edges to overlap. So let's do the center here. a purple one coming out so let's see hopefully this is a purple petal yep better more more purple than pink yep and so that goes into that color and last petal because I like things in threes or fives let's do one final one here Yes, yes. So suddenly we've got the deeper part of this thread. And for me, that's bringing the darker bits in between the flowers down to the bright white and yellow. Let's see if we can do one more. Yep, we can. we go Ta -da. okay so just up close three random little flowers joining these daisies that are going to join onto this butterfly who's flying beside the bird which we'll work on and over here this beautiful piece of um flowers and butterflies joining in so on that happy note of summer see I, again i like this because i can even see it in twos now um so there's the we've got one leftover butterfly here oh there's the script it's very field notes so we will see there will be a right place and a time that's a thread I need to finish and there's those flowers from my garden so thank you so much everyone this is Kate in a nest saying happy stitching and I will see you next time bye